This is a special video for uh, members. So Topher and I just wanted to share with you about what's coming up at this March's CEO Mastermind because we're super excited about it. Do you want to uh, tell them about it, Topher, or should I? Uh, we can share the responsibility. The, the one that I'm, uh, well, I know you're really excited about your best kept secret. So I'll let you talk about that one. But I will tell you uh, and anybody who's watching this video that I am hands down convinced this is going to be the best CEO mastermind, or for those previous customers, success mastermind that you have ever done. Um, all of the content is done. The slides are done. Everything is ready to go. And I mean, it is a solid agenda. Um, some of the ones that I think are really exciting for me is your negotiation piece that you're going to be teaching, which is some of the most advanced negotiation tactics I have ever, like I read books on sales all the time. I read books on negotiation all the time. And not once have I ever found this content in any of those books. It is hands down the most advanced negotiation tactics I think I've ever seen. And it's going to be cool because it's like a, it's a simulation where we're going to have everybody into groups of two doing a negotiation, scoring how well they've negotiated with everybody. It's going to be fun and it's going to be really cool. And you're going to walk away with this tangible new skill set on how to create value inside a negotiation. Yours, I know you're excited about, do you want to talk about well, it? Well, yeah, I mean, I just got kind of on the negotiation thing. I think people lose sight of the fact that incremental little tweaks there, like if that adds an extra X number of sales per year or X put to value of contracts, like these tools, it's going to make you a lot of money. You've got these tools, it's going to make you a lot of money for a long time into the future, right? It's going no to question. worth a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so best kept secret. I'm so thrilled about this one. Dude, we me. have, I mean, the world's changing rapidly, right? You, you have to be hiding under a rock not to see the shifts and how artificial intelligence is changing the world as we know it. And it, it's still very early days, but it's coming, chat, GBT, et cetera. And we have a senior executive from the world's leading uh, social network coming along. And this guy is an expert, world-class expert in artificial intelligence. In fact, he built uh, an AI company and yeah, sold it. It was, for a, it was it was ranked one of the top twenty or top twenty five. I forget most innovative AI companies in the UK. Right, right, and and, and then he sold it for a undisclosed amount. amount. Undisclosed amount. Um, yeah. And then uh, and then uh, uh, very quickly indeed was headhunted and, and placed inside. Uh, you know, in this for his AI expertise inside this massive uh, tech company, you know, which is literally one of the biggest companies in the world, right? Well, literally, I mean, he has he has been at the forefront at a senior executive level for three of the largest tech companies in the world that everybody would know if we mentioned their names, which we won't until they get to the event. But holy hell, it's like, to me, I think there's a lot of misconception about AI. AI. There's a lot of false-based fear on AI. And there's a lot of false excitement about what the potentials are. And, and, and what I'm really looking forward to is having him demystify the whole thing and talk to us about specifically what are the limitations, what are the things that are legitimate fears, and what are the potentials that small business owners can do with AI to streamline and, and increase the quality? It's going to be, I, I'm, I'm probably more excited for that than I am any of the other ones other than your negotiation piece. Right. And the potential has got two sides, right? So the people listening to this, they're either going, oh my God, what can I use it to do and be cutting edge and give me going forward? And again, what's really true as it relates to that? But equally, there's people that hear that are the skeptics that don't believe the hype. And again, I, I would want to know what is true because the ostrich defense is not a strategy. Like it, uh, imagine, uh, you know, people who 20 years ago were going, yeah, the internet, oh, well, actually it's pretty long now, 25 years ago going, yeah, it's not really going to change things because they couldn't foresee how dramatic it was going to be with broadband internet coming in and wireless and all that kind of stuff and, how, and the apps and cloud-based and how that's changed the entire world. Well, yeah, uh, you need to come along to to separate the fact from the fiction. Indeed. Uh, well, what else do we have? We have, um, I have alarms going off all over the place on my phone. Um, what are the other ones? Let's see here. Um, uh, oh, oh, pitch it to win it. 
How, how can I not remember that one? That's the one that I'm getting to teach. I'm so stoked about that. So this is a workshop that I've done for years and years. And uh, everybody who goes through it absolutely loves it. We're actually going to create a pitching competition inside the event where everybody gets to demonstrate their ability to pitch their business and what it does. And uh, it's going to be almost like a, a bracketed system to where these two go to compete against these two, the winners of these two. And we're going to get all the way down to where we got four people off on stage pitching and we'll pick one winner and then unpack everything that happened from the very beginning to the er very end and why those people consistently won the best pitch every single bracket and what got him up on stage. And it is one of the most eye-opening exercises because people literally aren't looking at it from an academic perspective. They're looking at it from an actual, ah, here's why I didn't win. Or, oh, here's why I did win. And here's why I didn't win the second round or I did win. And I I, I, I love this thing. I, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I mean, as always, it's it's, it's about practical tools to, uh, that people can really use. And and oh, uh, the other thing that we've uh, not mentioned, uh, which is 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 not new, it's returning by popular demand. We tried it for the first time last time, and it got either the highest or second highest feedback from a session we've ever had. Yeah, right. I, I, and so it, it, it's about the opportunities and challenges mastermind, where where uh, for those that weren't in attendance last time, we it, it was. Um, uh, a small group uh, mastermind sessions where we're, we're literally decimating whatever business problem you present yeah. and leveraging the power of mastermind. This is why it, it can't be virtual. You can't just get it from a book. It's about how do you leverage the, the brain power in the room? You know, the epitome of mastermind, you know, the mastermind, the third mind, the better yeah. solutions, quicker speed to solution. And that just blew people away. And I know some people uh, are watching this right now who had huge shifts and breakthroughs of problems that have been plaguing them for a long time uh, that they got it from that session. So that will be revisiting as well. By the way, that was so popular. You know what the number one request request in our feedback forms was in terms of how we can make it better? The number one feedback was make it longer, twice as long, like not just one section, but two segments, which we contemplate doing, but God, there's so much great content we've created. We're like, ah, you know, we'd like to make it two segments, but we got so much stuff. So uh, I'm I'm particularly excited. I can't wait to get back out to the UK uh, so I can shave off my protest beard because I'm growing this until I get back into to, to my newfound love of England. So uh, it's going to be a great, uh, it's going to be a great mastermind. It's going to be, yeah. 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 Here's my promise. It's going to be the best mastermind that we've ever created. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And obviously this is on uh, the 29th and 30th of March. Yep. So remember guys, this one, we've been telling you this for, for some lengthy period of time, but this is abnormal in that we normally run Tuesday, Wednesday. This one is a Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, the 29th and Thursday, the 30th of March. It's the same venue. Um, uh, 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 obviously, you need to let us know that you're coming because they are getting stricter and re restrictions on seats. So we just let us know that you come in, commit. Look, this 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 is something you want to be in the room for. The, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be world class and some of the magic. Um, if you talk to the members, if you've been going any length of time, the magic is is not just in the sessions, but what happens between the hallway, the outside, sessions. in the restaurants. Yeah. Right. right. So, uh, it, look, it is going to be our best ever. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, those uh, uh, several people that have been with us a long time have said, you know, we absolutely knocked out the park in December. And I agree with you. I think this is uh, um, this one is going to be well, we're constantly raising the bar. And uh, I, I like the problem we've got, Topher, when we after December, we got together, went, holy crap. How do we beat that? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, and we did. Uh, cool. Honest to God, we did. We've made this one better than the last one. Well, to be fair, I think I think uh, you guys are watching this video will be the judges of that uh, on the 29th and 30th of March. So we look forward uh, to seeing you at CEO Mastermind. All right, Dan, I can't believe we just got done talking about the, the program and we forgot one of the key things, which is your personal balance sheet section, which I, for one, was blown away at the simplicity of how it works, but the effectiveness on how it works as well. So explain to me, or not me, because I've already seen the slides, <laughs> explain to the uh, people who might be watching this what personal balance sheets are all about. Yeah, look, I, I, the reason why we're in business, or certainly one of the primary reasons, I hope, is to make money, is to build wealth. And, personal wealth. Uh, correct, correct, i.e., 
I, I, I believe that the difference between business owners who are scraping along and the ones who really uh, build wealth for themselves are, is financial literacy at the corporate level. Yeah. But what, what I'd note, i.e. understanding P&L's balance sheet, statement of cash flows, understanding the numbers and how they interact and work, um, turnovers, vanity, profits, sanity. But uh, sometimes, Topher, I, I would notice, uh, I noticed over the years, you know, the whatever, 15 years I've been doing this, people will make really big tractions in the business, uh, uh, growth. They grow revenue, but not grow profit. But then over time, as we got better and better, and I got more insistent on teaching the numbers at, the, uh, at a corporate level, people would make more profit. Yeah. But then anecdotally, I would notice that sometimes they, they wouldn't translate that to paying off their house. They wouldn't translate that to, you know, creating the life that they previously dreamed of, dr- buying their dream house or the, the, the lifestyle stuff because they failed to translate. It was almost like it was a separate world. So over the last few years, I've gradually started bringing in more sections on personal finance. Uh, and this one is hands down my number one favorite tool. Yeah. If you want to increase your net worth, your financial security, liquidity, uh, 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 write personal balance sheets where it's at. And it's it's a simple tool that I developed uh, to track my personal wealth uh, and make sure that it was constantly moving in the right direction. It's a really simple process. Yeah, by the and way, I'm- you know what I loved about it was the money map, like to show you where the money flows from the corporation and how it goes and, and the three different routes that it can take and how if you're ignoring that third route, which is going into the personal side, your business keep growing and you yourself aren't. And I, I, I loved it. Yeah. Well, um, and by the way, that, that that's something, the problem with entrepreneurs, the problem with us as a breed is we're, we're overly optimistic. We need to be in order to be entrepreneurs. Right. Um, and the, the, the downside of that is sometimes we've got all our eggs in that one basket. And then it, it, when the business goes through tough times, there's nothing to fall back on personally. Yeah. Yeah, and I, 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 I've been saddened. I, many times I've seen I've seen friends who have who have lost everything, and I don't mean just their business. I mean like lost their home. They've got in deep trouble because their their business was doing well at one time, but when the business went down, it took them with it. But as entrepreneurs, we've got the blinkers on, and we yeah. miss the fact that the the game is to create. How do you create that security for your family? How do you create that security for your spouse? How do you make it, you know, how do you set up uh, so your uh, your children aren't burdened with like maybe the financial pressures that you were raised with? And it's really making that connection about how it, uh, how you utilize the business to grow your personal wealth is everything. And I, this is my one of my favorite things to teach. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, yeah, if you do this, um, and it's a little routine that I run on a monthly basis, your net worth is really going to start growing and better yet, Topher, you're going to realize it because you're going to see it. It's going to be laid out in front of you and you can really see and feel the wealth growing. Well, not only, by the way, we've also created the tool for them to download. So there's, it, it, we've literally created it plug and play to where we've done all the back end work for them. All they have to do is enter the numbers and they can start to see how this process works. So I'm, I'm really excited. We've got some really cool stuff. We also have, by the way, which I think is probably one of the most underappreciated sections in the mastermind, but it is so powerful. And that's the strategic planning for the, for the upcoming quarter as well. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, always where the, where the rubber meets the road, right? You don't want to just go to a buddy seminar and get a load of ideas. That's a waste of damn time. Yeah. What you're wanting to do is to uh, figure out how to solve the problems and how to create a plan that moves the business forward. It moves the needle yeah. so so that you, you, you end up being like, you know, the people in our community that are perhaps most well known, like the Paul Goffs, like the Rob Stones, people that have, you know, 10 X and then some that have created multi seven figures net profit from six figure revenues like over time because, yeah. because they figure out the plan how to overcome the obstacles and get it into action. And that's and what we're going to be doing. Also, you know what? I, even though it's such a, even though it's, it, it's like, it's a one page, doc, which by the way is actually, I think an asset, a one page document, because sometimes I think one of the reasons why people don't go through a strategic planning process is that they're overwhelmed by the amount of burden it's going to be on their day. When this is a one page document where they can see everything for the next three months laid out, 
on one page, which is really great from a, from a, like, I've got so much stuff going on. They have the time to do it. But also it's like, I always think back to, there's, there's two things that I remember in one of them. And I don't know who said it, some military person who said, um, uh, plans never, plans never go to plan, but they're also irreplaceable or something. I can't remember the quote, but basically they never work, but they're absolutely essential. And if you don't have them, you're just kind of going by the wind. Yeah. So this it is was, a great it, do, you want, do you want to know the quote? Yes, please. It, it's it, There's two that you might be referring to. The one I think you're referring to is General Eisenhower, who That's was in it. charge of the Allied forces in World War II, who said, uh, um, uh, uh, plans are useless, but planning is essential. That was it, yes. Um, and I, I, the other one, which I think might also be him, but it might not be, is... Uh, no plans, uh, no battle plans survives first contact with the enemy, which uh, right. uh, which yeah. is a reminder of like, the entrepreneur, because sometimes we're resistant for doing plans because it all changes. But yeah. that hence the first quote. It's kind of like yeah. that's why you do the planning, consider the scenarios, most likely contingency plans. Yeah. And most people don't do this shit. Right. Tofa? And that's why they struggle. They just go to seminar after seminar and it doesn't make it work. The reason yeah. why, you know, it. Uh, I'm so proud of our program and uh, you know, the members been around for so long is because people, you guys are really smashing it out of the park and getting results. And that's because we make them do the planning. It's not just theory. And there is power in the simplicity because do you know, Topher, the number one uh, most reliable um, uh, factor or uh, most reliable criteria? It's in the context of diet, but I think the same is true for business. What's what's uh, what's the number one criteria that makes a diet successful or fail? What's the what's the KPI, the indicator? Uh, well, I, I would say, oh, as soon as you said KPI, I changed my answer. I was going to say self discipline, but I think probably I would say consistency or regularity would have to probably be. Yeah, that's yeah, that's close to the word that the research used, which is compliance. So, uh, uh, so it's i.e. the easiest diet to comply with. Well, what's the one that's going to work? The one that you can do consistently. Yeah. So metaphorically, you know, um, you can have the best gym in the world, but if it's a pain in the ass to get to and it's 45 minutes on the other side of town, yeah. you're better off being at a crappier gym, but it's literally around the corner from your house because it's much easier to co comply to the program. And that's why the one page plan, I, yeah. I'm not against if somebody wants to create a 10 page plan, right. but uh, like, Again, it's like just getting out the workouts inconsistently. And so so the mastermind's designed in this format to 80-20 to rule, get the key nuggets. If you want to go to town and do more details, great, supportive of that. But actually just getting you into that rhythm, as a reminder, getting into the rhythm of doing the plan. And I would bet if you listen to this video right now, look back at your times of strong performance and weak performance, I bet you that's a lagging indicator from the leading indicator of how diligent you were with the planning. That's not always true, but I, there's yeah, but listen, it's very correlations. Right. All right, one more thing. <clears throat> so I'm a part of the Success Mastermind. I've been a member for years. I got a lot of stuff going on. My company's growing. I got things coming at me from the left. I got things coming at me from the right. I'm just sitting there going, ah, oh, do I want to take two days out of my life to get up to war at conferences to go? You, you know the drill I'm talking about. What mm -hmm. would you say to anybody who's kind of in that space? I mean, I, I I would just want to shake them by the head, but what would you say to that person who's kind of contemplating going, God, is it really worth spending the two days, blah, 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 and just coming up with all the bullshit excuses that people tend to have? Yeah, uh, I would say every single quarter we hear some version of that excuse. And you know, uh, we make the case as to why they should attend. And I would say the proof is in the pudding. When people attend, I have yet to think of a single example where somebody has been on the fence and then decided to come where they didn't uh, uh, afterwards at the meeting go, oh, my God, yes. I'm so glad I came. I'm glad I came. Yeah, I hear it all and, the time. And the reason why, the primary reason why I think, Topher, is it's the most valuable time you can possibly uh, spend the time working on the business. Now, don't get me wrong. Look, there's crisis going on. Yes, but there's always going to be crisis going on, right? Uh, it, it reminds me of the metaphor. Uh, yeah, I can't tell this at speed, but you know, uh, uh, 
you're walking by a river and you see that you know so, uh, there's somebody drowning in the river so you oh, jump yeah, in you pick them up blah, 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 blah. and you pull them out and then there's somebody else screaming in the river so you pull them out and then there's somebody else screaming in the river and you pull them out and then you're working so hard you're ready to pass out but you're so busy you don't walk upstream and see who's throwing the people in yeah. right so so there's always going to be crisis and to 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 create the systems and processes and tools to actually solve the problem so you get you've got a scalable business take strategic thinking it's yeah. not going to be solved while you're running around with your hair on fire so there is a never statement. a convenient time to go, to go but you need gonna, to do it i'm going to make a really bold statement dan and it's probably good that i make it since i'm not a, a legal part of your company so they can't hold you responsible with it. Here, here's my statement I, I, this is how confident i am in this next mastermind there will be things whether it be in the pitching in the negotiation, in information you get from Dan's best kept secret coming up with how you can effectively use AI in just those three segments, not to mention all of the other ones, my belief is that there will be something inside at least one of those three, which, which more than pays for the entire membership into the annual success mastermind. I'm going to put, I, 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 I'm, I'm putting my reputation on that one. I really yeah. firmly believe that. So, so we're recording this on a Friday to over afternoon, and, and this is my last thing. So, so I, I, I'm going to take your point and trump it, but, but being a bit more blunt in the opposite okay. direction. Okay. The answer I was going to give when you said, oh, if somebody's going, oh, I'm busy, how do I take two days out? Do you know what my answer was going to be? Mm. My answer was going to be, don't fucking come. Because clearly, clearly, you're not committed to your business. Oh, wow. I have no damn interest in dragging yeah. you kicking and screaming, right? Yeah. Like if you yeah. if you're gonna get knocked off by the little things, yeah. Like I I I, I look I, I I had a call with just I referenced Paul Goff earlier. I had a coaching call with Paul Goff today. He's been a member for whatever six years. And the thing about that guy, he doesn't miss. Hmm. You know what? When we have a call, a coaching call, um, he shows up. He shows up on time. I can't remember him ever in six years working together of him missing a call. Yeah, wow. Right? There's been plenty of crises, and I, 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 I'm sure there have been a, an exception to the rule. I, but I, it's true to say I don't remember a single one, and I nor do I remember a single time when he's not come back and done the done the homework, done the thinking, done the plan. Which is right? probably why he has a seven figure profitable company, a multi seven figures, uh, multi seven profit figure profits, and and, yeah. and, and growing. Yeah. Right, like all right. I, I, well, there we go. Tough love from Dan. Right, and I think I, yeah. If you want to make excuses, okay. Like, uh, yeah, it, just know that um, you can get excuses. You can have excuses, or you can have results. You can't have both. All right, well said, all right, my friend. Thanks for taking two minutes to get on the well, more than two minutes, but thanks for taking a few minutes to get on the Zoom to share that. Appreciate you. Take care.